Hi friends, welcome to my YouTube channel. This is lecture number 7 and today we are going to study various triggering methods of thyristor. First mandatory condition for SCR to get turned on is that anode to cathode voltage must be greater than 0 or we can say that VAK must be greater than 0. After that we can use various methods to turn on a thyristor. So first method is forward voltage triggering. This technique is already been discussed in my previous lecture. In this technique anode to cathode voltage is made greater than 0. When this anode to cathode voltage is increased beyond forward breakover voltage BVO then SCR get turned on. But this method is avoided as it may damage the SCR. Now one important point I want to tell you is that magnitude of forward breakover voltage VBO is equals to the magnitude of reverse breakover voltage VBR. They are nearly equal. But practically VBR is slightly greater than VBO. Therefore VBO is taken as final voltage rating of device during design of SCR circuit. Now second method is gate triggering. It is most simple, reliable, efficient and widely used method. In this, when anode to cathode voltage is greater than zero, then a positive gate voltage is applied using gate cathode circuit. We know that when SCR is forward bias or VAK is greater than zero, then outer two junctions J1 and J3 are forward bias and middle junction J2 is reverse bias. This reverse bias junction has stored charges in its depletion region. So when gate current get established, charges are injected in P layer and they neutralize these stored charges. Due to this, thyristor get turned on and it get turned on much before the forward breakover voltage VBO is reached. This method is also being discussed in my previous lecture. Once the SCR get turned on, then no gate current is required to continue the on state. That's why gate current is applied in pulses instead of applying continuous gate current. It reduces the power losses in gate circuit. Here it is important to note that if gate current is made zero before the anode current attains the value that is equal to latching current, then SCR will again go into off state. Gate current is order of 20 to 200 milliampere. Now third method is DV by DT triggering. As I already told you that mandatory condition to make the SCR turn on is that the SCR must be forward wires or we can say that a node to cathode voltage must be greater than zero. When SCR is forward wires, then this junction J1 and this junction J3 act as forward bias, while this junction J2 act as reverse bias. This reverse bias junction has immobile ions around it. So this reverse bias junction J2 act as capacitor having capacitance Cj. Now if forward voltage is suddenly applied then the charging current start flowing and this junction carries current IC that is charging current. This charging current is given by IC is equals to dQ by dt. We know that Q is equals to Cv. That's why we can write d by dt Cj dot Va and that is equals to Cj dVa by dt plus Va dCj by dt. Here the junction capacitance Cj is constant. That's why its differentiation is zero. Putting this, we get IC is equals to Cj dVa by dt. If rate of change of anode voltage is sufficient enough to make IC greater than IL, 
IL is latching current. So if this IC becomes greater than IL, then SCR get turned on. In other words, we can say that IC act as gate current to turn on SCR. Now next method is light triggering. If VA gate that is anode to cathode voltage is greater than zero and it is less than forward breakover voltage VBO, then outer two junctions J1 and J3 are forward bias while junction J2 is reverse bias. When photons fall on reverse bias junction J2, then electrons and holes are generated which neutralize the stored charges across the junction. So depletion region width decreases and it starts conducting. Next method is thermal triggering. Again if an O2 cathode voltage is greater than zero and it is less than forward breakover voltage VBO then junction J1 and J3 are forward bias and J2 is reverse bias. As temperature increases, electrons and holes are generated which neutralize the stored charges of junction J2. So in both of these methods, the main concept behind it is to neutralize the stored charges across junction J2. In light tri triggering, it is neutralized by generating electrons and holes using photon while in thermal triggering, these charges are neutralized by electrons and holes generated by rise in temperature. Consequently, width of depletion region decreases and SCR get turned on. Now take a question. What will happen if gate is made positive with respect to cathode during reverse blocking mode of thyristor? Or we can say that what happens when positive gate pulse is applied at junction J2 or gate during reverse blocking mode. The answer is, we know that junction with lightly dubbed layer on both sides requires large breakdown voltage and junction with highly dubbed layer on both sides requires less breakdown voltage. When reverse voltage is applied to SCR, then outer two junctions J1 and J3 are reverse bias and junction J2 is forward bias. This junction is forward bias. J3 has low breakdown voltage as it has heavily dubbed layer on both sides. Junction J1 has large breakdown voltage as it has lightly duped N negative layer on one side. So during reverse wise, J1 has most of reverse voltage appear across it. Now if positive gate voltage is applied in reverse bias SCR, then J3 breaks first and whole voltage appear across junction J1. This will cause increase in reverse leakage current. The flow of large leakage current along with high reverse voltage across junction J1 will result in high power loss across junction J1. These losses heat up the junction which may destroy the SCR. Now take this important point. Carrier frequency gate drive is used for turn on of thyristor. It reduces the size of pulse transformer. This point has been asked in ES2005 and ES2001. So that's all about this video 1. I hope you liked the video. Thank you. Jai If you got the knowledge and concepts from this video, then please like the video and subscribe the channel. You can give your views and ask any questions related to this topic in comment box. Also share this video with your friends because sharing is caring. Don't forget to press the bell icon to get the notification of my upcoming videos. Thank you.